You're watching the fourth lecture from a mini course on virtual reality game development with the HTC Vive, Unity, and Steam VR. In this video, we'll have a look at the Steam VR camera rig prefab, and we'll get our first look at our scene in VR. The Steam VR plugin and Unity's VR support are changing quickly. So for the latest version of this video, click on the link shown on the screen to go to learn.vrdev.school and enroll in the free Vive developer mini course. Now we're ready to explore the VR scene. So what we're going to do here in this video is we're going to add the uh, camera rig, the Steam VR camera rig into our scene and get that all set up. And then in the next video, I'm going to go into more depth on what's in that camera because what we're going to do is actually rebuild the main camera into a VR camera. So that's going to be a really good video for those of you who have an existing project who already have a camera. Maybe you have some scripts and some other things on your camera and you want to convert your project to VR. So for this one, we're going to start with the prefab and that's found in the Steam VR under the prefabs folder. You just go ahead and drag that camera rig into your scene. It's transformed its positions at 000. That's where we want it. So make sure that it's at 000. And that's because Steam is going to take care of where the camera is in our scene. Steam VR is going to take care of that for us. So we definitely want to make sure why is it zero. Um, and that's because non zero values will offset the ground plane by that amount. So the ground plane that you calibrated with the Steam VR room setup then that's going to be the zero in, uh, in your game. So you just leave the camera at zero. And so for example, if you set Y to one in here, so if we set Y to one, then when we loaded up the scene, then all the, the, the ground plane and our, and our sphere would be one meter below us. So because it offsets by that amount. So I recommend you just work with Y equals zero for sure. And actually probably you should just work with X and Z equals zero also, and then build your scene around that. And then Steam is gonna take care of where you are in that space in the, uh, when it loads up, okay? So I would just leave all that stuff at zero. Let's explore all the components in here. So we've got the controllers and you won't see anything in here. And that's because all of that gets rendered when you load up the scene. So here we've got a Steam VR tracked object script here, and then the model, which is actually just a Steam VR render model. And we've got it left and right, which are exactly the same, of course. And then you've got your camera, your head camera. So this one is called the origin, and the origin is gonna control where your tracking volume is in the game space, right? So uh, we'll get into that a bit in the next video, but you can see here there's a, an outline of a tracking volume. And there's a wireframe around it that's two units high, two meters high. That's right here. And that's, uh, that's the tracked volume that you're simulating while you're building your level. And that's controlled down here in the size. Like I said, we'll get into that more in the next video. But that's called the origin. That's the center of your sort of play area. Okay. And you can see here it's got a Steam VR play area script on it. So and then we have the controllers and then you have the head. And so this is the one that represents the head transform. And you're gonna, that's the one you're gonna to wanna to put like anything that you need to track the head's motion, you're gonna be putting on as a, uh, as a child to this. But of course, be careful there because actually generally attaching objects to people's faces is not a good thing in VR. So there you've got the Steam VR game view script, you've got a VR tracked object script. And then here you've got the eyes. So you've got a Steam VR camera script and a flip script. Flipping the script, huh? I think that's a little bit of a joke. And you'll see this collapse button. We'll get into that also later. And then the ears that was just added the other day recently. So it's the audio listener, right? Now we've got two cameras in the scene. We don't want that. Actually, we've got three cameras. And that's because the head also has its own camera on it. And that's the screen that you see when you run a Steam app. And you get the, the player is going to get the HMD view and on your, on your computer screen, you're going to get this, uh, a small window screen, right? And that's from this camera. So we'll also get more into that a bit later too. Next up, we want to disable this main camera. Just go click on the main camera game object and disable that. You'll notice here actually on head. So we had the main camera was tagged as main camera. That was the original one. And now it's the camera head that's tagged as the main camera. The next things we want to do is drag in the Steam VR prefab. And this prefab is one that would actually get created at runtime by the Steam VR camera script. You can actually read the code in the Steam VR camera script and you'll see that 
it would have created this SteamVR object anyway, or an object with this script on it. But it's uh, it's nicer to have it in the scene than it's explicit that it's existing, that it's there, and then it gives you all of the uh, options to change those settings, right? I'm not sure if it's even faster. It might also be. I mean, you know, it's nice to have it there and explicit. So yeah, that's uh, just put it in your scene, and then you you have a direct access to that. Um, the other thing you should do before you run this scene is have your Steam VR running. So this is the one that you start, you know, this, the tool that we installed earlier, and uh, have that running. I got my controllers here, so I'm going to turn those on. Okay, so those are on now. I can see everything is running fine. And uh, yeah, we should be able to, we're just about ready to walk around here. So if you've got the runtime, you've got all that stuff, you can go ahead and click play. It tells me I can now put on my headset. I'm picking up my headset here and I'm looking around. So there's the controller sitting on the desk in front of me. Everything's of course washed out from that directional light. So there's our sphere right there which we said was at z equals zero, right? So that's the center of our room, but I'm off in one corner of my tracked volume. And uh, so that's that there. Let's actually just, I'm just gonna turn off that directional light and we'll just use the point light here. It'll give us a little bit more contrast, right? So there you can see the sphere right there. Okay, so that's it. So that's, that's what you need to have a very basic Steam VR scene. So go ahead, pause the video now, try it for yourself and have a little walk around, get a feel for the space that you made. And uh, we'll see you in a sec when you come back. Okay, so you paused the video, you had a little walk around. I hope it all worked, everything worked out for you. If you had any problems, there's a few things you can try. So I would try, first of all, recalibrating your room because sometimes maybe it, maybe it was tilted when you started or something weird like that happened. So just try recalibrating, making sure all these lights are green, everything's good there. Um, things, of course, have been updating really rapidly. So if you're watching this before April, uh, when the Vive starts shipping, uh, it's been like almost, you know, several times daily that there's been Steam updates. It's been pretty impressive how fast everything is improving. So, the, you know, it might have been that there was a Steam update in the meantime while you were working. And if it updated in the background, it might be that you, for example, have to, you know, shut down Steam VR and restart that or, or and maybe also Steam itself. And of course, the, the old failsafe of just, you know, restarting your PC is uh, always a good idea. Just give it a restart, then you can recalibrate and then try it again. The other thing you can look out for is if there's a firmware update. So if you go to your Steam VR and then devices update firmware, then you'll see each of your devices here. And you can see if there's going to be a firmware update, it'll be probably flashing and then say there's a firmware update. So if there is, you might want to update that. And then when you do that, you're going to have to restart the Steam VR and maybe even your PC because sometimes the driver updates seem to not work very well until you restart, right? So um, you can try all those things, okay? Okay, so that's it. So you've got, you've got a basic scene. You've already walked around it. And uh, that's, that's, you know, that's the basics of a VR scene. You're, you've already gone into VR and you've uh, looked at the ball and you're already thinking, oh man, I really want to hit this ball and knock it around. And I'm going to show you that too. But in the next video, let's dive a little bit deeper into that Steam VR camera and look at all the components there. And uh, we'll convert this main camera into a Steam VR camera. So that'll help you if you've already got a existing camera for an existing project, you'll really understand all the components that go into making a Steam camera. Okay, so let's see you in the next video. Click on the link on the right to watch the next lesson from the Vive Developer Mini Course, or click on the link on the left to enroll in the full course for free at VR Dev School. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to get more virtual reality developer videos from VR Dev School. 